Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this week's edition of the Kubernetes 114 release team meeting. Today is Monday, February 18th. I am your release lead, Aaron of Sigbeard, and you are all being publicly recorded uh, and will hopefully be adhering to the Kubernetes code of conduct, which basically boils down to please don't be a jerk. Uh, this meeting will be posted to YouTube later, so you can all look at your smiling faces. Um, I thought I would try something a little bit different this week and see if this works going forward. I know I am your release lead, uh, but I would really rather hear from everybody else first, and then I can clean up whatever we decide we need to kick to the parking lot at the end. Um, so I'll just say up front that according to our schedule this week, the only big thing on our radar is the release 114 branch and cutting a beta off of that. So I'm sure Hannes will have a lot to talk about. And then next week, we will start to kick up the frequency of these meetings to Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, that is the start of the burn down phase where we'll start to really try and drill down on scope. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand off to Claire to talk about enhancements this week. Hey everyone. Um, updates for enhancements this week, we're tracking 38, that's two down from last week, one, uh, both were deferred for uh, 115 or later. Um, of those 38, 36 have a cap. Those two missing caps were due to exception requests that were approved. And then metrics on alphas 11, beta 13, stable 11. Any questions? Uh, so Claire, I believe uh, we met along with some other folks on the team with uh, Natasha to talk about sort of the themes for the release and blog posts. And part of this was going to involve uh, us asking the different SIG leads sort of what they thought um, their important themes for this release were. Uh, what can you share with us about that? Sure, so uh, talking with the communications team, um, they're looking to focus on, we know for sure Windows and then we have a few other areas of interest, though we are still reaching out to some SIG leads. I was in the midst of an offsite last week, so a little behind on that, but uh, Windows for sure we know, and then we're exploring a few other potential themes. Okay, any questions on the enhancements front? Um, I think another question I had, I also was a little bit um, out of the loop last week was, uh, if you've had a chance to look through caps and get a sense for whether or not they are suitable and usable, you know, whether or not we feel like, yeah, that graduation criteria really does have a checklist that uh, we can understand. Um, and yeah, there's definitely a, a test plan there. Um, did you have a chance to take a look at any of that on, on your end, Claire? Yeah, so I started doing that and made it through um, a handful of cups, and I've been putting notes on that in the existing spreadsheet for enhancements under the notes section. So I have just something where it's like my name and then I'll say notes on the cup and give a one to two sentence summary of what I'm seeing within that cup. So I haven't finished all of them yet. Okay, cool. I would uh, say for the most part, it looks like it's about 50-50 uh, in terms of having really well thought out test plans. Most have graduation criteria spelled out. Okay. That's good to know. Um, so I, I personally am feeling like we really want to uh, have a much better uh, sense of whether or not they're usable or not and possibly use that as forcing criteria uh, when we get to burn down. Mm -hmm. um, while I'm at it, I'm sorry, I, I kind of blazed right on through to enhancements up top. Could somebody please volunteer to be a note taker? I'm not really good at doing the active listening and talking and typing thing at the same time. 
I'll take notes. I'm taking notes already for tomorrow's okay. meeting. Thank you, Mike. Um, okay, thanks a bunch for the update, Claire. Uh, moving on to Maria, would you like to talk to us about CI Signal this week? Yep. Uh, hi, everyone. So we ended last week uh, in a pretty good state. We, in fact, started this week on a almost clean, almost green test grid, which is great. Uh, there have been, not for long, <laughs> fortunately, uh, I, we are seeing some failures as for the last like couple of hours from what I see. Some of them seem like timeouts and things like that. So I want to um, watch them maybe for another run and see how persistent they are. Um, so that's on failed runs. Speaking of flakes, this is something that we will be looking in a little bit more detail over the last couple of weeks, and at least until code freeze. The intention there is to get uh, as clear a signal as possible once we enter, as, as we approach, um, as we approach, as we approach the release date. Um, so we start paying a lot more attention on whether there's like flake patterns or consistent flakes, if that's even a thing, uh, going forward. And last but not least, end of last week, we had a quick run through through the 114 enhancement um, list and try to figure out if there's any impact for CI signal or anything that we need to pay attention to. Uh, some, like a lot of the enhancements had still need to work out their test plan so it's something that we'll have to go back to um, as development continues but if there's anything that you know of that happened in the last releases um, please let me know any questions so a part of a part of my personal sense on the test plan front is that if you as CI signal are un unable to actually determine whether or not a given enhancement is working correctly, uh, we should not ship that enhancement. So I feel when I talk about using KEPS as forcing functions, I think part of what I'm suggesting is that you have the authority to say, if there isn't actually a test plan for your enhancement that I or my shadows as CI signal cannot read, I don't think this enhancement belongs in this release. Mm, that's interesting. I wonder, so I'm not clear, I wonder if some enhancements have the intention of adding a testing plan soon, but I think it's a really good shout out and maybe that's something for us to pick up and go back to, to folks that have submitted enhancements and try for a bit more of a definition. Right, so my, my recommendation would be for you and your enhancements to sort of identify uh, those, those issues or those caps that don't have a test plan that you can understand and ask them to get to a test plan you can understand uh, because we will be taking a much, much closer look at that as we begin burn down next week. Because um, if we can't tell whether or not a given feature is working, it doesn't seem uh, to make sense to really lock it in into code freeze. Like how will we understand the urgency and clarity of given fixes that are trying to land after code freeze if we don't actually have a signal to determine whether or not they're fixing the problem. Cool. And sorry for the obvious question, but do we care about things that won't make it to the release, SIG release um, test script dashboards? Uh, or are we, can we take SIGs to their word when they say, I've got this under like my own test suite, if you want. If they have it under their own test plan, that's, um, that's great. I still feel like they should be able to enumerate that. So you should okay. be able to understand, you should, I, for me personally, where I in that role, I would ask for like, where, where's the test grid dashboard that I can look at? Um, or what are the specific test names or what's the regex that I can use uh, to make sure this is in the, this is green, right? Gotcha. Uh, do you, is there any help you need uh, on, let's see, it looks like uh, the upgrade tests kind of still seem to be perpetually failing. The upgrades should be, well, they were clear this, I guess, this UK morning. Um, so I think they're mostly new, unless I've missed something, they're mostly new failures. Okay. Um, 
last question I personally have is um, we currently don't have the cops job listed as release blocking. Do you or anybody know what the story is there? I don't know where, what dashboard is it under at the moment? Is it, okay. under? it would have been under release master blocking. I believe it was removed um, because it's been perpetually failing due to some credits or accounting issues. Um, and I kind of just wanted to talk about that out loud to make sure we collectively understand right now we have no way of verifying whether or not Kubernetes actually works on AWS in a release blocking manner. Mm -hmm. um, Tims, do you happen to know anything about this from a, a Kate's Infra working group perspective? Uh, hi, I, th I believe they figured out the credits issue, but uh, I remember seeing at least one failure, um, somebody was talking about a failure uh, after things got back switched on. Uh, so we'll have to go back and check with them. Okay. I had, I had launched some kind of email thread last week, but I haven't had the chance to catch up on everything. Um, so it wasn't clear to me where we stood on all of that. I, I personally uh, love to see all green um, so that's great. I just am, it would be even better to see coverage on more than just the GCE cloud provider. Although I guess technically we do have kubeadm as a slightly different way of standing up clusters. Uh, so there is that. Okay. Anything else? Uh, it, seems, it seems to be like the COPS AWS is uh, fairly green at the moment, if I'm looking at the correct job. Okay. Uh, it's uh, in the COPS lifecycle dashboard, COPS dash AWS. So it's fairly green, but I'm not sure if that's the same job that we had in release blocking or not. Okay. Uh, so if it's missing in the release dashboard, you should approve. Uh, Basically, the re-addition of the job, if you want. Yes. Uh, I guess Justin is uh, ju the right person to talk with about this. And we can right. ping him in the Sig Release channel. OK. Uh, Maria, do you think you or one of your shadows could take the lead on that? Uh, yeah, we can, we can reach out. So that would be to say cluster lifecycle, right? Yeah. Uh, there, there probably are. more specifically to, to Justin SB. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to ping Justin in the SIG release channel. Okay. Right oh, okay. Yep. That'll work. Uh, and the one that I saw, uh, which was broken, was closed. Uh, I pasted the link there. Looks okay. like that got opened by Sham and then he closed it. So we are all good there too. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, it looks like it stopped perpetually failing on, oh, just after Valentine's Day. Cool. Maybe <laughs> it was just really scared about Valentine's Day. Uh, okay. Um, thanks a bunch. Uh, moving forward, uh, is Nico or anybody from Nico's team here to talk to us about bug triage today? All right. Um, Let's see, who do we have? To, is Duval here to talk to us about test infra today? Hey, yes, Aaron. Um, so we had a good week. We had 131 uh, commits last week. Uh, before that, we had 117, I think. And the week before that, it was 137. So we are going back up. Uh, the job, the, the pull request for updating the CI jobs for 1.14 is uh, approved. Um, and once, um, and so we are, we are ready for the next phase. The pull request for automating most of that work, uh, rotation of release versions is also approved. And, um, once the, uh, earlier pull request goes in, we'll do a final comparison of, uh, how the automation is comparing to the 
uh, what we did manually and then push it in. That's it from test infra. Uh, so I think just to follow up from a discussion we had last week, there was a question around the value in separating uh, 110 job removal and 114 job addition. Mm -hmm. uh, where did you end up landing on that? So the summary was we would be doing them together. So the manually, so there are two requests. One is where we are doing it for 1.14 uh, manually. We're doing it together, 1.14 and 1.10 both are getting rotated together. The automation is also doing it together. Okay. Yep. There was a one week gap between them. So now we're gonna do it together going forward. Okay. Um, and so I apologize if you just already said this, when is your plan to land that? The automation, uh, once we uh, push the manual one, and then compare what you know the diffs between what the manual one is generating versus what the automation one is generating will push the automation script also. Uh, in terms of like a, a date, I could um, I could communicate. Are we talking about uh, this week? Uh, should be good. Yeah. Uh, beef, like so. It's on, it's listed on the schedule as Tuesday, I guess. Yes. The the, the yes the manual one should be on uh, Tuesday evening. Once the, once the release is done, we will sync, uh, sync up with branch manager to, once the branch is created, we'll probably be able to push it. Okay. Yep. The automation does not pick up the creation of a new branch here. That is still manually intervene. Okay, so does this need to happen before the branch is created or after the branch is created? Hmm. Good question. I'll, I'll sync up with uh, uh, Cole and Amit to get back to you on that. Okay, I mean, maybe we can have Hannes talk a little more, or we can talk a little bit more about this during Hannes's update on uh, okay. the actual branch. Um, okay, uh, moving, uh, any other questions? Hey, Aaron, I did have a slight update for uh, bug triage. Nothing much, um, but I'm a shadow, and so, hi, first time caller, long time listener. Um, uh, I, we have a, we're investigating uh, usage of spyglass for issue tracking. So as a part of our automation efforts, we're kind of looking into how um, all of this might be automated in some sort of meaningful way. Um, this is kind of looking into the fact that we uh, are not sure exactly where we should be placing stuff, although we, we understand that we're kind of moving towards spy, uh, spyglass from Gubernator, and I'm not honestly sure about that of that framework just yet as well. So we're, we're looking into that. I have a issue that I will copy and paste into the chat so that everybody can follow along there with where we are in that automation effort. That's our update. Cool. Yeah, uh, getting back to your earlier question, I think we would need to do, uh, we, we would need the 1.14 branch before we uh, do the push the job configs. Right. I mean, I expect like a bunch of the 114 jobs would fail if there was no 114 branch to pull from. Uh, but you could at least still verify like uh, that all of the old jobs were removed, all of the old dashboards were removed, and all of the new dashboards were created and that they looked about right, just that they wouldn't pass. I, I believe in times past we have had a bit of a period where the the jobs were created before the branch was um but it's like it's totally fine whatever ordering we choose okay uh okay is barney here to talk to us about docs yes uh hi everybody i'm Barnabas Barney. uh i'm here to talk about docs uh jim is not available because he has a conflict with the he has another meeting but what we have done so far, uh, we have created a branch uh, for docs, which is uh, one, dev 114, and created a placeholder that have, have been linked in the docs uh, that will be merged during the release. So we have assigned each other uh, enhancement that will be, we, are, we have to ping them to know if they, they need docs. If they need uh, to create at least uh, 
placeholder PR before before March one, which is one week and a half from now. Yeah, I think that's it. Any questions for Docs? Okay. Is that March 1st deadline in the release? Okay, yes, yes it is. I see it's in the release schedule. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Jeff, would you like to talk to us about release notes? Absolutely. Uh, this week we're meeting to try and figure out if we should change the change log format. Uh, I had the dumb idea of maybe we should make a website that tracks all of our release notes throughout all the different versions so we could actually be able to filter based on releases, be able to see what changed between 111 and 114 and say you only want to be able to, you only want to see what storage stuff changed. So we're going to talk about that. That is, that is pie in the sky idea that's not going to block us from doing anything else. Um, also this uh, week, we're going to start working on updating the external dependencies. And I just like an hour ago pushed the draft for uh, release notes for this week. That's where things are right now. Things are going to start ramping up uh, this week and next week for us. OK. Um, so same question to you, the release notes representative from a comms perspective. Uh, what what do you feel like you got out of last week's meeting or what did release notes get out of last week's meeting with comms on sort of trying to decide what the important enhancements and release note or release themes would be for 114? That's kind of tough because Lindsay was at the first half and I was at the second half because I had an appointment halfway through and she had an appointment halfway through. So together we got kind of a full perspective. Um, what we got out of it was what are the like what are the patterns based on all the different release notes looking at it from a release note perspective you actually pointed it out uh, pretty well there was an abundance of different changes for storage that are going into 1.14 so should that mean that storage is a theme and I would actually agree okay yeah I was uh, totally um, riffing uh, it's like release note jazz. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't believe we have anybody from comms here to talk to us. Uh, so Hannes, why don't you fill us in on release branch management? Sure. Um, so yeah, as we said, um, tomorrow we sh will cut the beta zero. This will, the tooling will automatically create the 114, uh, release 114 branch. Um, I will, there is no clear documentation on what should happen first. Uh, should the branch be there first and the, uh, the jobs later or vice versa? Um, as you said, I don't think it matters too much, except the jobs will fail probably if there is. Um, no branch there yet. So I will try to align with the um, testing infra team. Um, the least I will do is like, of course, let them know as soon as I've cut, but I will try to figure out maybe today um, what, like, what, what, is, what is the more appropriate way to do it in regards to ordering. Um, and if that is figured out, I will update the document, the role handbook. Um, in regards to cutting the thing itself, I don't expect any issues, but well, maybe now I changed it, but we will find out. Um, I will do the cut tomorrow, my noon, which is early morning um, East Coast time. So that should give us a bit of like overhead, uh, overlap with, with US folks. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it regarding the cut. Any questions about that? So 
I believe once the branch is created, there is then a need for uh, syncing up everything that lands in master into that branch. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that process is and uh, how frequently or when you plan on having that happen? Um, yeah, this honestly, from the top of my head now, I'm not sure how often we want to do this for the beta release. Um, I will try to figure that out and in the role handbook. But honestly, I, I cannot remember how often we did it in the last release. Uh, as soon as, like at the, end, at the end of the release cycle, we did it daily. Um, I'm happy to align there on, on like which time of the day we do it. Last releases, we always did it end of the day, I think um, Pacific time. That would, of course, be not too good for me, but I can do it, I don't know, for example, um, whatever. Um, I can do it. Yeah, we will figure out a, a time which is suitable for everybody. Uh, the thing is, we will, especially towards the end of the release, probably be a bit careful about when and if we if we do the branch fast forward so that we don't get into a situation where we need to cherry pick some things uh, in case we got some bad um, commits into master but um, I think that's 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 more relevant for um, later on as said before I will try to figure out what a good schedule is for the next couple of weeks for basically for uh, beta zero, how often we want to do brunch fast forwards. So uh, one thought I had is uh, maybe there's somebody in the Pacific, it looks like your shadows are all in the Pacific time zone. Um, Maybe we could look to ensure that one or more of them would be capable of, you know, pushing the button, so to speak, so that if you're not available and we find that we do need to make it happen, uh, we could have it happen on a time zone that lines up with where another large chunk of contributors are. Yeah, the problem here is that my shadows don't have the appropriate access uh, or permissions to certain things. I talked about this uh, with Caleb and we are not really sure if we want to give all the shadows all the permissions. Mm -hmm. um, so at least for now, it seems that this will be so basically only uh, the release branch lead and the batch patch management team will have the appropriate rights. So I think that's not really a thing we can, like giving the shadows the full access. I think that's not going to happen at least this time around. Okay. Um, do we have a document or issue that differentiates the, or that lists the permissions necessary just for fast forwarding uh, versus cutting an entire release? I'm not sure if this is specifically laid out in the role handbook, but I can check on that. Okay. Um, I, I just, my, my personal feeling is, uh, actually blessing a release and making sure that it is appropriately signed and all that good stuff. Um, I can understand that needing to be constrained. Uh, but uh, I, while I recognize the way that branch syncing works is not actually just a git push or a git fast forward, there's a little bit more to it than that. It does feel as though that is a significantly reduced permission set that applies just to a git repository as opposed to all of the different places that we store bits once they're cut. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, yeah, I will, I will check on that if we can like distribute the load here a bit for the branch FF. Okay. 
Uh, I also feel for, for what it's worth that um, this is a good place to collaborate uh, um, with your, your test, sorry, your um, bug triage folks and your CI signal folks. Um, because as we start to move to a place where we want to understand whether or not a bug was truly fixed, there may sometimes be some confusion about which branch or which board we should be watching. Um, in times past, I have seen this uh, most often happen when it comes to failures that occur in upgrade tests. And then people get a little bit confused about what version of Kubernetes we are upgrading from and what version of Kubernetes we are upgrading to and whether or not the bug fix has actually landed in these appropriate versions. And so sometimes the timing of the fast forward can be important there. And also yeah. just knowing how to track down that information can be really helpful. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I will try to align here with, as you said, um, bug triage and CI signal um, to see like when do we want to do fast forwards and, and figure that out. How we, when we do, when we get the, or how we get to the go or no go for the fast forwards. Good, any more questions or comments on the cut? Yeah, I looked at the test infra documentation. It says uh, then the, the, the steps that we do for test infra are done after the release branch is cut. So and I remember last couple of releases, we have been doing it, uh, syncing with the branch management and doing it after the branch was cut. Yeah, okay. Um, well, um, as said, I will start doing uh, things um, early morning um, East Coast time. I don't know where all the test infra people are, if they are on East Coast or West Coast, um, but I will let you know as soon as the branch is there. Uh, James Munnelly is in the UK. Ah, yeah, right. Good, then there is the other thing about all the packaging caps. So on the side of building packages, um, SIG Cluster Lifecycle is working on a cap. There is no PR yet, um, but I would assume that a PR comes up um, in the next couple of days. I'm not sure if this is gonna, how long it will take until the PR is actually in um, implementable state or how long it will be in uh, provisional and how long it will take until the details are hashed out. But I will um, like try to give them as much context as I have and help them um, getting an exception in case this still hits um, it's early enough. Um, anyway, I guess um, I link to the document if anybody has some um, input on what needs to be there until it it would get um, it can get PR'd in as provisional. I would say that's a good place to add comments in the in this Google document, and I will keep you up to date on what the status is. Uh, regarding this cap. The other side of the coin is um, the how to add this um, package publishing and so on into the release process. I started working on a cap for that. It's still on a, in a hack MB, so no PR <clears throat> opened yet. And I would love to get some input uh, on that uh, cap specifically what people think is needed to get it merged as provisional like the bare minimum to get it merged and then I feel we can um, hash out details in further PRs and also still a bit unclear to me is 
who should be reviewers and approvers to this cap. I feel the owning SIG should be SIG release as it's the idea is to in, incorporate the publishing side of the things into our build or our release tooling currently Anago and GCP manager and whatnot. Um, yeah, who would be appropriate and who can I uh, ping for reviews and approves on that? And officially add to the cap as approvers and reviewers. You can add my name to that list. Uh, I will wear my SIG testing hat for that particular. Uh, I have so many hats, so I have to be clear. What, what, what capacity am I acting as here? So SIG testing hat, um, and I can be an approver. Um, and I feel like I would personally prefer to see um, an approver from the release engineering subproject of SIG release, uh, whoever that should be. I see you have Sumi listed on, on your cap right now. Um, so that's a start, but perhaps, um, you know, your Caleb's or your Tim Peppers or something like that. Uh, but we can, we can handle that offline. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been like watching all of this stuff from a distance for the past couple of weeks. I do intend to make a genuine effort of reading through both of these caps to understand uh, when, where, and how they're going to land. Yeah, um, um, yeah. It, I will, it's not fully clear to me when, when they are in a state where they are implementable, but I will keep, keep you all posted here and probably in SIG release. Slack chain. Okay. Uh, Dims, I don't know if you have any interest in these or if you have any suggestions for uh, people from the Kate's Infra working group who might be applicable here, since I believe eventually, uh, though I haven't read this, like at some point we'll want to talk about this in the context of how does it run on CNCF owned infrastructure, not Google owned infrastructure. All right. We just need to know what. Uh, assets you need and we'll see how we can get them uh, that that would be what we would do on the kids and side yeah i have some ideas what what would be needed um details on that are still very much under discussion sure but that's definitely a kind of a section in the cap what what infrastructure is now really needed for that okay Thank you. Okay, and yeah, I saw uh, Lubomir's suggestion of Jeff Grafton. Um, he would be a good person to consult, um, but I'm not sure that I want him as somebody that you block on. Um, awesome, I really appreciate you uh, working through all of the, the cap stuff for this. This is super important stuff. And now we come to the open discussion part where I guess I said I was going to go last and I personally feel as though I've had most of my questions about what's going on answered. Um, does anybody have any other open questions or announcements or comments or ponies they want. Nobody wants a pony? Really? <laughs> They're expensive to feed, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, so uh, thank you everybody for showing up. Uh, I think I gave a couple suggestions for uh, some things for people to do. Uh, as always, you you more or less have my full authority to say no whenever you say no to stuff. Um, and if you get pushback and you need escalation, I can be the person you escalate to. And if I'm not available, uh, Mike and Ben most likely will be. Uh, and I think that's all I have. All right, cool. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday, everybody. Bye. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye-bye.